I think you're gonna really like this. It is the Guide Thermal Track IR Monocular. A quite nice design. So what you're seeing on the screen is what I'm seeing through monocular. Look at this water tank out on the hill here. 1,700 yards away. Detection is great. Like I know that there's something up there. Hey, it's Alex here from alexfergus.com. Now, if you're looking for a thermal monocular that has a really good high quality thermal sensor and also has all the key features such as Wi-Fi out, zoom function, hot tracking, and multiple color palettes, but you don't want to pay the five, six, seven thousand dollar price tag that some of these monoc monoculars have, then I think you're going to really like this. It is the Guide Thermal Track IR Monocular. I've had this for about three months now, and I have to say, I'm very, very impressed. I was impressed when I purchased it. I went in looking for a low cost, super basic thermal monocular that I could use around the house for hunting, pest control, security, and also for reviewing my infrared saunas. Um, I wanted to spend no more than $2,000 uh, and you know just get something basic. I didn't want anything fancy. After about two hours in the shop, I kid you not, I think they were a bit sick of me by the end of it, I ended up coming up with this and I was super happy. So be sure to stick around because in this video, I'm going to take a deep look at the Guide Track IR Thermal Monocular. I've had this for a few months now, I've used it in all sorts of environments, hunting, uh, I've used it for pest identification, I've used it for reviewing thermals, I've even used it for identifying uh, weak points in my house uh, insulation. It's really, really cool. I've had lots of use with it and um, I'm going to show you all my experiences and feedback in this video, so stay tuned. So before we begin this review, I need to point something out. Very recently, just before I was about to release this video in fact, uh, I discovered that Burris, the company that make binoculars and rifle scopes, have launched a new thermal imaging line and it turns out that they have used, I, I believe, I'm not 100% sure on this, I'm 99.9% .9 sure though, that they are using the Guide Thermal um, brand or product, sorry, uh, and just relabeling it. And, and this model that I'm reviewing here today is the equivalent of the new Burris handheld BTH35. Now the funny thing is, price wise they're actually a little bit more expensive than the guide but if you look at the unit itself and if you look at what comes um, in the package, you know the accessories and you look at the specs they match up 100% in terms of what guide are offering. So again I, I've had this verified now by another person um, at a completely different gun store saying that yeah it's the same unit they've just repackaged it which is which is reasonably common in um, you know electronic space and uh, even in hunting circles as well um, so again if you're looking at getting a Burris handheld monocular thermal then this video should line up pretty closely if not perfectly with the Burris models one thing I have noticed that is slightly different is on the Burris handhelds they've obviously got the Burris logo on there which is to be expected but one or two of the buttons have been um, changed so they're actually bright red which is which is neat I mean it makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to orientate yourself or, or someone else using the buttons uh, other than that though spec wise performance wise Everything looks identical. So what do you need to know about the Guide Track IR monocular? Now it's made by a company called Guide Sensemark. They're a Chinese brand and they're rapidly growing in the thermal imaging space. They have over two decades experience in the thermal imaging industry. Uh, they cater for markets such as health, engineering, security, search and rescue and hunting. These thermal monoculars are rather new for the market. However, they're using the same technology that Guide have been using for, for decades in the other spaces. This particular model is the Attrac IR 35mm focal thermal monocular. Now they have three product range, the Guide Nano, the Guide Track IR, and then the Guide Track Pro. So, so the Track IR comes in above their Nano range, but below their Track IR Pro range. At the end of this video, I'll do a full comparison on, the, on all those products. This is the 35mm, they also have a 50mm and a 25mm. So again, it is smack bang in the middle of their product range. It cost me three and a half thousand New Zealand dollars, which works out to be about two and a half, two thousand six hundred US dollars. And it comes with a 400 by 300, 17 micrometer thermal sensor. As you can see on the back here, I have the track IR 35mm. Uh, version of this monocular um, 
you can see the different options even on the sticker back here we got the I've got the 400 by 300 resolution thermal imager you can get the pro version the pro range which is the 640 by 480 um, we can do some comparisons later on in this piece uh, and you can get different uh, focus sizes 25 mil 35 and 50 and obviously I've got the mid, mid range here at 35 mil um, with the high refresh rate 50 Hertz straight away you see it is a quite nice design fits in your hands really well here this is 192 millimeters long which works out to be about seven and a half inches um, you can see why I was quite attracted to this monocular uh, over some of the or over the the, the scopes um, because I wanted something that I could take out with me if I'm hunting or going on a bushwalk or um, you know just around the house and I didn't always want to clip on and, and have to clip off clip on and off scopes and stuff and this is something that's not too big it's not too bulky that you're tempted to leave it at home you know I can pick this up grab it chuck it in my pocket and away you go or into my binocular case for instance uh, it does weigh at 485 grams which is just under a pound the smaller um, focus uh, monoculars in this range are obviously a little bit lighter and the pro one a little bit heavier but not by much uh, you can see you've got buttons on the top so your menu buttons your zoom buttons power buttons uh, you have the focus ring around the lens here uh, with the protection cap which is quite handy to have on the side here you have screws this is on both sides you have screws for um, Picatinny rails so for instance you could um, connect a, a laser um, I don't really know what else you'd put on it uh, maybe a laser so you know if I'm looking through this and, and my mates beside me I can shine a laser and, and he can identify where the target is or where the animal is or whatever um, what else you've got a tripod mount on the bottom here and <clears throat> over here you have micro HDMI plug and a USB-C plug for charging micro HDMI plug is, is for um, connecting to a screen and you have your adapter focus piece um, and your eyesight uh, speaking of dropping it this is IP66 rated which means it is dust proof and um, protected from high pressure water so technically you can't immerse it in water but I'd say you could drop it in a puddle and it would be okay um, but it means it's splash proof, rain proof and all that good stuff so that is the device, we'll have a better look at this later on when we're out in the field but uh, let's see what else was in the box so we have a quick start guide which is it's actually very very handy as a good quick start guide goes through everything you need, how to set up the Wi-Fi how to calibrate it, the specs, and you can see all the different specs for um, all of the options in the guide. So that's cool. It's got a warranty card, <clears throat> and then we've got a couple of things down the bottom here. So, so we have a couple of cables. We've got a USB to USB-C charging cable, HDMI port, so you can plug it into your TV screen, for instance. Uh, and then we've got a lanyard, quite a nice lanyard. Um, so you can connect this At the moment I've got the wrist handheld piece on but I could swap over and put this lanyard on it All right, so now we've got a neoprene carry case cover case and lastly we have a switching power supply unit so your USB plug goes into here To charge the unit now. I just noticed that there's no Mount. So, so because I'm in New Zealand, my PowerPoint's going to be different to what you have in the UK or America. So typically when you get devices like this, they'll have something that slides on uh, for your local PowerPoint. But there's nothing in the box. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, not that I'm too worried about it because I've got a ton of USB chargers um, around the house that I don't really even need another plug and I, I wouldn't have even used this. So that's everything that came with my guide uh, track IR thermal. We have the monocular itself, quick guide, warranty card, lanyard, charging cables, HDMI cables, carry case, and a PowerPoint adapter that doesn't really work. 
So I figured the best way to show you the true capabilities and the features that the Guide Thermal IR has is to come outside and have a look around. So behind me, I've got our little farm, uh, a couple of paddocks, we've got some hills, we've got a bunch of water troughs, there might be some wild goats up in the hills. So um, I'm going to quickly show you how it looks in person and then we're going to turn this on and see how it looks through there. As we're looking through here, I'm going to explain some of the key features and the things um, that I really like about this device. At the moment I'm looking up our gully um, and you sh might not be able to see it in the moment, but there are two animals about 250 yards away in this front flat paddock and further up the back about 450 yards away is a water tank 25,000 litre water tank for the farm now um, I've got my Nikon P1000 here with a massive optical zoom so I'm just going to zoom in and show you this is what I'm seeing in person and then we're going to look we'll switch over to the guide and, and see what it shows on that device so there um, you see the two animals you can see some beehives at the back there and then there is the water tank all right, so I've turned on the thermal and I'm standing at exactly the same spot as where my um, camera is set up. So you can see the hay shed there. And then center screen, you have the two animals. Uh, so I'm in white hot mode. So the fence posts, the animals, the tin shed uh, are all white, white hot, obviously. Uh, you've got the four beehives there, or well, 16 beehives. Uh, and the hot track is pointing, not actually to the hive, right next to the hive is a water trough. So. That water trough temperature is hotter than those two animals which are standing right next to each other which is why they look like one uh, and you can obviously see the trees quite clearly right it's quite remarkable um, how sharp this is so i want to test the zoom function so first remember those animals about 250 yards away and then there's that water tank 450 yards away now you see the um picture in picture mode there again it is digital zoom it's not super sharp but um for this price thermal it's not too bad yeah, it's not too bad so let's look at all the color palettes first now i personally use white hot the most um i there are five options and i've just found this to be the best for my environment before we go through them actually there are three color setting uh image settings and there's enhanced highlight and nature so nature suits me the best probably because i'm looking out at nature most of the time. Um, enhance just makes everything a little bit sharper, or well, not sharper, just brighter. Uh, highlight makes the contrast a lot sharper, so the white really sticks out. But it's hard, I mean, it's good for identifying, say, animals or real hotspots. Um, but obviously, once it's hard to, to know exactly what you're looking at. So, for instance, that tank at the back, it's just a white blob. Uh, I put it into nature and you can make out the difference. So black hot just reverses everything. So the cool tree, uh, the leaves in the tree which were in the shade and the breeze were previously black, now they're white because they're cooler. The animals have gone black, the hot water at the, in the water tank in the sun has gone black, uh, the rock faces have gone black. So, um, you know, it's handy but again I still prefer the white over the black. Uh, here we've got red hot which is similar to white hot, however the really hot objects have a red hint to them which is good for quick scanning iron is what many people will typically think of when the, when you say uh, thermal imaging you know that sort of red yellows purples look um, and then you have blue hot now I did like blue hot when I first got it this was my go-to um, I guess again you've got the contrast but you can still make out what things are like you can see this tree shape you can see uh, the water tank just, and it's very apparent where that cool and hot uh, cutoff is. So for instance, this tank I'm looking at in front of us, it's about 30, 40 yards away. You can see the water level, um, where the water level is there because the hot air above the water tank is a lot hotter than the, the cool water. All right, so here I'm gonna show you how the guide track IR works on the iPhone app. So I downloaded the app, I connected it together, they sync up via Wi-Fi, it took me a few seconds to set up. So what you're seeing on the screen is what I'm seeing through the monocular. So this is obviously a driveway, uh, and I am in the white hot mode at the moment. You can see the tree line, which is about 500, 600 yards away, uh, and you'll, you're seeing the fence post you're seeing the picture and picture in the top left there that's just magnifying whatever is in the center of the screen 
um, and the hot track feature, which is that little cursor bouncing around. So in the app as well, you have direct access to all of the settings for the thermal. So you can do this through the device, uh, or you can do it through the app. It's a little bit easier actually through the app. So for instance, I can change brightness settings, contrast, the picture mode, uh, enhanced, highlight, nature. I typically use nature for most out outside shots. Um, I can change the brightness and the contrast. And I'm just pushing these buttons here. Uh, I can turn off picture and picture and hot track. And then of course you can change what type of um, color palette you want. So I'm using white hot, but you can go to iron, blue hot. You can take photos and record directly through the app as well. So now we've seen the guide track IR in action. There's a few other things I wanted to show you about the unit itself. Now on the top here, you see you've got a bunch of buttons, one, two, three, four, five. These all obviously do different things. You've got the power button at the front, you've got a zoom button, menu button, another zoom button, and the calibration slash photo button. Now, they all have secondary functions. The zoom, for instance, you hold it down, it does a smooth zoom, which we saw outside. Um, it also changes the image between nature, enhanced, and, and um, highlight. The back zoom, um, that changes your color palettes. Menu, you've got two menus, you hold down for one menu, you click once for the other menu, uh, and power. The power off mode is actually pretty cool here. So you can just hit it for a, a brief moment, like half a second or so, and it will turn off the screen. And that leaves the unit running, but the screen is off. Uh, it saves a lot of battery life. They say a five hour runtime on this, and I believe that. I haven't quantified it yet, but uh, I've used it many nights, uh, going out shooting possums or rabbits and just around the house. Uh, testing sauna and saunas and stuff like that. Outside, I also mentioned the front front manual focus ring, which is this ring here. Uh, it's a nice like rubber texture grip. You're not going to bump it or anything like that. It actually does need a firm grip to adjust. Uh, it is a little bit sticky in places, and I know I mentioned that is there's a slight delay. So between the stickiness and that um that delay, uh, the focusing, it can be a bit tricky getting it bang on which is why once I have it in focus for you know a couple hundred meters, I tend to just leave it there. You also have this eyepiece at the back, and they call this the light leakage eyepiece. So when it comes to your eye, there is no light being um, emitted around the face, you know, lighting yourself up. They do have the Track IR Pro range, which is quicker to turn on, doesn't have these bright lights, uh, and, doesn't, and is a lot quieter as well. And that's designed for the hunters. So that could be a better option for those who have a little bit more money and a little bit more serious about your hunting. Uh, the rear button at the end here is for taking photos. So you can snap photos. And to get video recording on here, you just hold down that photo button for a few seconds and then it starts recording. Unfortunately, when you're recording, you can't zoom, you can't get into the menus or anything like that. So you want to make sure everything is set up um, before you start recording. But it's still pretty cool. And speaking of recording, this device has a 16 gigabyte um, internal memory, which is huge because you're only recording at a pretty low resolution anyway, like your 3, 400 uh, by 300. It's quite low resolution in today's standards. It means you're going to get like 26 hours of recording on this before you have to delete it, which is insane. It will probably never happen. How does the guide monocular hold up with object detection at long distances? Now with a 300 by 400 meter thermal sensor and a 35 millimeter uh, focal length, this isn't your go-to device if you're looking out to, you know, a thousand yards, for instance. However, on the website, Guide has stated that this particular model, and I'm going to quote you here, has a detection range of a 1.8 meter man, 6 foot man, of 1,000 meters, which is 1,050 yards, maybe more, 1,100 yards, uh, and a 500 meter recognized range. So I've set this up to look at this water tank out on the hill here. I've got my range finder, I'll find out exactly how far away it, away it is. 1,658 yards. So to fair distance, whether I'll be able to see anything through this, I'm not too sure. First things first though, so you know what I'm looking at. I've got my Nikon P1000. We're going to zoom in on this. There it is. 
Two water tanks. 1,700 yards away. Got track IR on, so it's automatically going to go to the hottest point, and we're on white hot mode. It's somewhere in the middle here, so straight away you can't see it, all right? I know where it is, but I can't see it through here. As I zoom in though, let's see if anything changes. There we go. As I zoom in, the track IR picks out the water tanks. But if I didn't know they were there, I wouldn't be able to spot them. That is pushing it though. It's probably not the best example to come up with. You can see them though, as we move out, you can see there's two white blobs there. I wonder what would happen in different settings. In fact, in black hot, they're a lot more apparent. And there we go. In red hot, those, you can see the benefits of red hot there. Because those two red blobs on the hill, um, they're the hottest points, right? Though not quite as hot as the, one, the um, corner of the shed right in front of me so anyway it's probably a bit too of an extreme of a range to uh truly push this device um it would be cool doing that with one of the top of the range pros with the 50 mil focal length uh because that would probably be a lot more clear as i look out there now i can see the slight reflection from the sun on those tanks but again that's 1600 yards away that's a fair distance another feature that the guide track ir has is the stadiometric rangefinder tool. Now this allows you to get a rough estimate on distance if you're looking at a rabbit, a pig, wild pig or a deer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up the rangefinder mode. Now I could do this directly through the thermal using the buttons on the top or I can do it through the app. I'm using the latter at the moment just because I can set up the guide on a tripod. It's nice and steady. Uh, I don't have to move around uh, pushing all the buttons and it's just going to look horrible. So I'm going to pull it up and straight away you see these two lines. And now if I'm looking through the thermal, I see exactly the same thing here, except the lines are, I think are green instead of red. Now all I do is I adjust these lines it's actually really easy to use on the app just using your finger drag and drop i just just these lines to get the height now you do that from the 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 uh, height of the animal from its feet or hooves right up to the top of its head again we're assuming that that's a deer out there right 150 centimeter tall deer now based on those measurements you can see in the top left hand corner of the screen there it's saying if that was a deer, it is 56 meters away. If it was a boar, 33, and if it was a rabbit, 13. Now, 56 meters, that's, um, that's pretty good because I used my Bushnell uh, Fusion rangefinder before filming this, and that distance from where I'm standing is 55 meters. So 60 yards, so 55 meters. So that's actually really, really good. 56 meters versus a 55. I mean, if I, you know, play around with this a little bit more... Um, you know, I don't know how long the grass is there. I mean, you could say it's pretty much bang on. Now, let's do the same test for the boar. I'll take it down to that third rung. Uh, there is a few inches of grass there, so... Um, all right, we'll just go with that. And now that's spitting out 61 meters for a boar. So, uh, it's a little bit different, you know, 10% different. But again, for a thermal, uh, using algorithm to calculate range, it's it's pretty good. I mean, it's it's better than I expected, to be honest. A couple of things I forgot to mention. The device also has a standard tripod mount at the base of the unit, which means, yes, you can put it on a tripod, but you can also screw in, you know, Joby little handles or any other camera accessory, which is really neat. Uh, I haven't done this, but you easily could. You could take something like this, a little mini tripod, flexible legs, take it out on the hill, set it up on, say, like a, a pig dump site, and just have it sitting there uh, at night time, for instance, or low light, and then have your phone displaying what's on the screen, and you can be sitting there relaxing. You don't have to hold it. You don't have to always be watching the site. You can be looking around at other things, and then if something comes out, you've got the phone, you can see it, and away you go. So that's really cool, and you could use the micro, uh, micro HDMI port on the side. The photos from here aren't very good. I think what happens is there's too much movement, and they're always a little bit blurry. Uh, I'll put a few up so you can see them. Um, the videos on the other hand are fine. Uh, it's exactly what you're seeing through your eye, so that's good. It's got that 50 hertz refresh rate, so that's obviously helping with the videos. Behind me, we have our neighbor's hill. That's about 400 yards away. There's some pine trees 
up there and very frequently there's goats that come out. The other night I was looking up there through the thermal. I couldn't see anything but the track IR was bouncing around in the trees. I got my binoculars out and yep there were a couple of goats just walking about 10-15 meters up from the tree line uh, and they were just walking around. So that's another another reason why that track IR is really good uh, for pest, pest control and hunters. We're up in those trees right and without the thermal I know I heard the animals and that's why I got the thermal out but um, if I was out hunting and sitting up on the hill scanning around that thermal would have picked them up straight away uh, as soon as I went over that area. So let's zoom in now, see if we can see them through here. Because I spent too long fluffing around. I wouldn't have known those goats were there if I was just looking around through my with my eyes. Uh, if I had binoculars, maybe, but there's a lot of things to look at. What have I looked in that particular spot? Who knows? With the thermal, I can just scan around, daytime or nighttime, boom, there's something up there. You get your scope out, you get your binoculars out, and yeah, there, away you go. You know, there's an animal there. Yeah. there. I'm quite far zoomed in, but you can see a couple of goats in there. Now this is with a high-powered magnification. So again, oh yeah, you see the other one in the top there. So they're just going in and out of those trees. Again, to spot them without a thermal would be very, very difficult. Track IR going straight up into the bush there, into the trees. Um, it's bouncing between two of them by the looks of it. Yeah, there's a couple up there. The only downside with the track IR is when it's over the target or the animal, uh, it actually makes it a little bit hard to see. So um, I'm going to zoom in now. But you can see that's about 400 yards, right? Maybe a bit more. And um, obviously, I, I wouldn't know if that's a goat, a deer, a sheep. Um, it's just because I heard the goats crying out before. So that's it, full zoom there. Just changing between the picture modes. So again, detection is great. Like, I know that there's something up there. Um, let's try a different picture. That's black hot. Red hot, iron, blue hot. Uh, that's thick trees that I'm looking at and it's picking out those black dots. And see, this is where the red dot's really good because it's picking out those animals in the bush there that I wouldn't be able to see otherwise. So anyway, you can see how dark it is when I turn that off. And then turn it on. And when I was looking through the thermal, I mean, again, you wouldn't have known. Light or day, right? Quite, a, quite incredible, huh? So that's how powerful these things are for nighttime use. And it's why I gave up, I didn't bother with the night vision. So, now you've seen the device in action and I've shared some of my experiences with it. I thought I'd do my conclu concluding remarks, both what I like and what I don't like, and then my final summary. So let's start, at, start with what I do like about the device. And there are a lot of things here. Firstly, the battery life. Five hours battery life I think is great. Um, like I said before, I don't have to charge this, all, charge this all the time. Often I go out, uh, use it for 20 minutes or so, come back in. I don't have to worry about charging it again. Secondly is the size. Personally, I think this is near perfect. I mean, to be honest, it would be great if it's smaller and lighter and all that stuff, but it can fit in my hand easy. It's not too heavy. I can put it around my neck and it's not weighing me down. Um, I can put it in my pocket if I've got cargo pants. It's, it's a good handheld size. The other thing I really like is the image quality. For this price, the image quality in this thermal is very hard to beat. Yes, there are better ones out there with higher resolutions and bigger, bigger focal lengths, but for this price range and this size, I think it's it's amazing. I can see four or five hundred yards. I can identify animals, water tanks. You know, I, it's very clear what something is and what something isn't at four hundred yards. I wanted something that was I could identify targets, and then I could use my binoculars or my scope, or if need be, the spotlight as well if I'm out at night time. I just wanted to look at a certain place, a couple of hundred meters away, and say, "Hey, is there something there?" I can do that with this easy. 
I can I can never get it pitch black darkness. Uh, I can never get around the house. It's quite amazing, and it's a very sharp image. The Wi-Fi phone out function, uh, micro HDMI function is also very very cool. I. Don't know if I'll use the micro HDMI out function very much, but I'll definitely be using the phone functions. I've touched on the benefits of that before. If you're buying a thermal around that thousand, two thousand dollar price mark, make sure it's got that function because trust me, it is pretty cool. If you go out hunting with someone else, or even if you're on your own, you want to set it up. The other thing I really like is the hot track function. Again, I was going to buy the Guide Nano, the base series of these, and it didn't have that function. When I saw the hot track in use, I was like, that's awesome. In your image, it'll immediately, the crosshairs will immediately go to the hottest thing. So when I was looking outside the shop, as the cars were going past, it was going to the muffler, and then the next car's muffler, the next car's muffler, or exhaust, as some people call it. Picture in picture is neat. It's not a game changer, but it is neat to have, saves you having to zoom in and out. But it does take up a bit of screen space, so there's a downside there. Splash proof, drop proof, um, I haven't submerged this. It's not designed to go in water, though I'd say you probably could drop it in a puddle, puddle and it would be okay. But it's designed for, you know, out and about recreational use. So that's good to know as well. These are Wi-Fi setup was also another plus. Um, it literally took me a few seconds. I thought it was going to be complex and hard to manage, but it's not. And not only is it easy to set up, you can control all the settings from your phone on here. I thought it was just going to be a visual out, but no, you have access to all the settings, which means you don't have to play around with these buttons. Um, very, very cool feature. As for the things I don't like about the Guide Track IR, to be honest, it was hard. I had to, uh, I had to really think about the ne uh, negatives here, but I didn't want a list just of positives. So there were three things I came up with. First, it's not suitable for professional hunters. I mean, you've got the noise aspect, and it's when you turn it on, it is quite noisy. Uh, you have the light uh, at the top, a little bit of light leakage through the screen, but mainly the time to turn it on. If it's if it's completely off and you turn it on to look at an animal, it's a good 10-15 10, 10, seconds to turn it on, um, and that can just you know, that can be the difference between getting a shot in or not. Uh, and that noise, if you're in the bush or close range, uh, it could startle an animal. So, if you are a serious hunter, you know, this isn't for you. However, they do have that pro pro range, which is quieter, quicker to turn on, doesn't have the light as well. So, there we go. Uh, secondly, it is the limitation of the five color palettes. Now, um, personally, I don't think that's a deal breaker for me, but I, I know some people who are you know very serious about their thermals and have a lot of experience with them. You want at least 8, 10, 12 color um, palettes out there uh, to for different environments, different settings. And again, for me, um, I've just set it on that white hot mode in my couple months of using this, and it, it 80, 90% of the time, it's all I need. Um, but again, if you're a serious user, you're probably wanting something with a few more options in there. Thirdly is the uh, distance limitations. I mean, this is good for identifying an animal out to 300 yards. Uh, beyond that, you might know that there's something there, but you don't know what it is. So how does this guide track IR 35mm compare to the other models in this range? Now, it gets a little bit confusing because guide have three thermal monocular ranges. They have the base range which is the guide nano they have this range which is the guide track ir and then they have the top of the range the guide track ir pro now within each range you have different options some have wi-fi some don't and then the big difference though is the focal length so it can get a little bit confusing within this range the track ir the mid range uh you have 25 mil option focal range 35 and then a 50 mil of course the bigger the focal uh, length, the the better the image, the, the further you can see. Um, so I've gone smack bang in the middle. Mid range, middle, uh, mid focal length. I hope, I hope I'm not confusing you with all this. But overall, this is a good price, good value, good features. Uh, if you wanted to save a little bit of money, yes, you can go down to the 25mm focal range, um, or you can go down to the nano. Of course, if you want to go up, you go up to the bigger focal length or the pro range. Um, Remember this has 400 by 300 at 17 micrometer uh, sensor. The Nano, the base model, is actually what I went into the store to buy. Um, they have the same sensor, 400 by 300, 17 micrometer, but they only have a 19 or a 25 millimeter focal length, whereas the one I ended up was a 35 millimeter. And that makes a big difference, because like I said, I went in looking at the Nano, and I looked at this, I looked at some other high-end ones, and I was like, I've got to spend the extra money. How much are you saving if you go down to the base uh, nano at 25 mils? It's about, 
It's about a thousand dollars less. So it is a big saving, but I, I could justify spending that extra money just based on the quality. It, it was the difference between seeing like two, three hundred meters clearly and, you know, 400 meters clearly like you can see with this. That tank at the back, for instance, 400 yards away, it would have been a lot blurrier with that base nano model. So Plus, this track IR compared to the base nano range has a few extra features. So for instance, you get five or six color palettes, the Nano only has three, you got the Wi-Fi out function, uh, you got a little bit better battery life, a few um, internal features that I don't believe are in the Nano. So this one comes in the 25, 35 or 50. Uh, so I guess you could argue, well, do you get the Trek IR in 50 mil or do you get the Trek IR Pro in 35 mil? Uh, you'd really have to compare them, but I think I'd lean towards the IR Pro with the 35 mil just because you're getting the better thermal sensor. As for price differences, I purchased this for 2,700 US, and that was from Gun City. I'll put a link to their, them below. It's a New Zealand store, though they do ship internationally. If you um, you can buy it from GuideIRUSA.com. I'll put a link to them below as well, and it's about two and a half to two eight um, to 2,800 US dollars or thereabouts. I'm gonna see if I can get you guys a discount code. At the time of recording, I don't have anything, but let me see if I can pull something up and I'll put it in the notes below if I can get you guys a discount code. If you go up to the 50 mil range, you're spending an extra $500. $500. If you go up to the Trek IR Pro, you're spending that extra grand $1,200. Um, so yeah, the prices are all over the place, I know. Uh, it's a little bit confusing. But So let me sum it up like this. If you're new to the thermal space and you want something that you can use for pest control, um, hunting, just around the house, security, then yes, this Trek IR 35mm is an excellent choice. Uh, two, three thousand dollars, I mean for a sub three thousand dollar unit, it is, I think it's amazing. It's got all the features you need, Wi-Fi out, multiple color palettes, digital zoom, the rangefinder, the Trek IR, which I think is awesome, um, picture in picture, good battery life, five hour battery life, um, splash res resistant, 16 gigabyte internal memory, it's got everything you need. Uh, and it's why I ended up on this, uh, when I was looking at all my options. If you are a bit more serious, then of course you go to more of this, you, you may want to look at the Trek IR Pro Mode. However, if you're in the States, you can go to guideirusa.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Be sure to hit subscribe because I am going to be covering other gadgets, hunting devices, thermal scopes, thermal monoculars, and all sorts of other products as well on this channel. So hit, hit subscribe below. Check out my other videos and I will see you soon. Bye.